Hey everyone, in today's video we're doing a creative photo shoot behind the scenes indoors with natural light on the Sony A7 IV with the Sigma 35mm f1.4 and I want to share with you some of the unedited photos that we take and share with you some of my thoughts of this lens as well so let's get started. This is the setup that we're going to be using today. I've set up the backdrop pretty close to the window and next to the part of the room that has two big windows so we have the most natural light coming in as possible. I'm using a linen sheet for this but you can also use just like a bed sheet if you're on a budget and you want to get a similar look and I've also decided to just drape this linen all the way onto the floor so we have some cool textures to work with when I'm creating levels with the photos that we're taking so we're going to take some standing up some laying down some sitting on a stool and we've got all that texture to work with in the background of our photos. And then I thought we could also try sitting on the floor and then you can kind of lean like your arms on the stool. Um, so I might actually, if we bring the stool out this way a little bit more and you scoot over so I don't get like the ugly stand in the background. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love the way you move. It's like very natural. It looks really nice on camera. <laughs> I'm super excited to be using this Sigma 35mm f1.4 FE lens today. One of the first things I noticed when flicking through the photos we got is that this lens is very sharp. I can see a lot of clarity and details in these portraits and the colours look great straight out of the camera as well. Oh, even if you lean your chin on your hands just like that. Something interesting when it comes to portrait photography is that you don't want a lens that is clinically sharp and this Sigma does a great job at balancing sharpness with a very natural look so it's super flattering for portraits. Do you want to sit cross-legged and then we can put the stool, actually we'll get rid of the stool. Those shots we were taking were wide open so I'm going to take some photos at f2.8 as well. So I'll just have to bring my shutter speed down and my ISO up a little bit too. Do you want to have the shirt maybe like off your shoulder? Yeah. And did you want to try sitting with like one knee up? Yeah, I love that. Okay, I'm going to get in a little closer. It comes through so I have to physically. <laughs> Even when stepped down to f2.8, there is a nice amount of clarity and sharpness to these portraits without it ever looking too clinical. Here's a side-by-side -side of two very similar shots at f1.4 and f2.8, so you can see them side-by-side. -side. We've got a green top that I'm using for the styling, so I thought it would be cool to bring in this green banana leaf as well, which will match the colours of the outfit. And it will also be a nice contrast from such a neutral background as well. We'll have that nice pop of colour in our photos. And look at what I had to do. <laughs> Just so the leaves wouldn't get too like floppy in the shots. <laughs> this is just to help them stand up. Maybe we should try some standing ones because you can maybe, I don't know, you make it look better than me. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> this Sigma 35 weighs 640 grams versus the GM35, which weighs about 100 grams lighter at 524 grams. For a little more context, the new Samyang 35 f1.4 Mark II weighs 659 grams. However, that lens doesn't have an aperture ring. I like the size and weight of this Sigma 35. Even though it's not lighter or smaller than the GM35, it still felt really comfortable to shoot with. And all three of these lenses have a 67 millimeter filter thread. If you hold it kind of up and I can get like a close-up shot. Maybe if you come from this side, because I feel like that side this looks side nicer. Color. Oh, behind. Oh, that's so pretty there. I really love that this Sigma features an aperture ring as that's not always common with third-party lenses. We also have an auto setting on the aperture ring, just like the GM35 that allows you to control aperture via the camera instead. However, there is also an auto lock switch, which locks your aperture ring in auto, which you don't see on the GM. 
On top of that, this lens has a click switch to de-click the aperture for smooth stepless aperture control. We have a standard AF to MF switch and an AFL button that can be customized just like native Sony lenses to any function you like. This lens is also weather sealed. And then I also wanted to try if we get like a close up with a banana leaf kind of almost going in front of your face. <laughs> oh yeah, like that. Oh, I love that. I'm gonna just go I'm wide open down, again. So that split isn't. A little bit down, yeah. But you could even kind of hold the leaf. The Sigma 35 f1.4 DGDN uses a stepping motor, and I found the focus performance to be very fast and accurate. On the a7 IV, IAF was super sticky on Bella's eyes throughout the entire photo shoot, which you can see from the picture in picture. IAF really doesn't skip a beat. Oh, I love those. They look so good. This lens felt super easy to shoot with, and I was able to capture great results one photo after another. I love culling a portrait session where all the photos that I like in the fit to view preview look good and then are also sharp when I zoom in to 100% to double check focus. Like any lens, this Sigma does miss focus occasionally. It might focus somewhere else on the face or in the frame, but it never really got in my way of being able to select all the final shots from this portrait session to edit. I did an autofocus test at home with the a7 IV with a wide focus area, continuous autofocus and IAF switched on with a more challenging subject where I was walking towards and away from the camera for some movement. And from a few different batches, I was able to get an average of 16 out of 20 photos with critical focus on the iris. Uh, if you, can you bring that hand in towards you a little? Yeah. It was just getting like chopped out of the frame. Maybe we can do like laying on your stomach. Your hands can rest kind of on it. So I like that splash of green. I think it makes it stand out a little bit more. We've been getting a lot of rain in Sydney lately. So of course, when I book in a studio for a rainy day, it ends up being sunny. But since this whole photo shoot was indoors, I ended up using the Sigma again for another portrait session outdoors as well. It was a very sunny day that day, so I will have a lot of backlight examples, bokeh, lens flare, and video samples that we can take a look at. I'm currently working on editing that video, so it should be out soon. Speaking of editing, I edited all these photos using my Hazel Lightroom preset pack, which I'll leave linked down below if you're interested in seeing some more before and after examples. I've been using this pack quite a lot lately. I really like these slightly muted but natural colors. Like that. You can even kick your leg a little bit out to the side, would be cool. Yeah, like something a little fun. <laughs> And then I wanted to do one more sitting shot with like that window in the back. Like around this side. Ooh, okay, that looks amazing with the window in the background. In these photos here, you can see a small amount of green and blue chromatic aberration around the window frames. For my personal taste, this is a small amount of CA that is easily removable in Lightroom. And again, in my next outdoor video with this lens, we'll be able to take a better look at that with the backlit shots. And I'll get a couple more close-ups here as well. Overall, I am so impressed with this lens. It really wowed me when I used it at the photo shoot and when I was taking a closer look at my files afterwards. The build of this lens is comfortable to shoot with and I think it's great that it features an aperture ring. In terms of performance, this lens has very responsive and sticky IAF, making it a great fit for portrait sessions. Now that you've seen all the unedited photos, let me know what you think of the image quality in the comments. This Sigma 35mm f1.4 DGDN is an optically great lens and is good value for money. If you need a fast 35 for portraits or weddings or general usage, I do think you will be happy with this lens. 
This is a little sneak peek into the outdoor photo shoot video I'm working on, but it does also perform great outdoors in bright backlight too. So that is all I have for today's photo shoot on the a7 IV with the Sigma 35mm f1.4. Love to know what you think of this lens and which ones were your favorite photos down in the comments below. And let me know if you want to see more studio shoots as well. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.